Morning, David. Good morning, Christopher. Are you well? Oh, I think we're wonderful today. Yourself? Good. Yeah, keeping going, you know, despite the old war wound and all the rest of it, it's uh, it's all okay, you know. We're on our own today because sadly, uh, Jo has had to go to uh, her old stamping ground in uh, in London um, to a funeral of uh, a man who was a great encourager of her in her early days of faith and uh, and youth youth work and so on. So uh, she's not with us today, and we so we pray for her and and for uh, her friend who's died. So uh, it's just you and me. Just you and me. What do you think we'll cope? Well, we will. It's a shame she's not here because uh, it's the story of Ma Mary and Martha. I think we're going to hear it eventually. Oh. And I'm sure Joe's spin on Mary and Martha may be slightly different to ours, but it would have been interesting to have debated together. And we won't um, try and prejudge as to whether she was more Mary or more Martha. No, 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 not today. That'll get us in lots of trouble. It can get you in lots of trouble because I'm not even entering into it, Chris. So. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll leave that to you. If you wish to hang yourself by your petard, I'll leave it entirely up to you. Oh, no, 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 no. Did you, notice a bit of Did you notice a bit of Shakespearean creeping in there? Oh, you're so well educated, David. Oh, no, no, I don't think so. I'm from Smithy. But apart from that... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you coping with the heat? I don't mind the heat. It's, I don't like humidity, but I don't mind heat. Yeah. You can shelter from heat generally, can't you? You can do, because when, when you can't get away from it, it can be a bit much. Oppressive, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know. So I don't mind the heat, and uh, that, that'll be fine. And uh, I know you've got lots of things to, to prepare, weddings and funerals and things, and I've got some wedding uh, stuff to do. I've been, served with a, I've been served with a notice from the council, Chris. Have you? Well, what does that say? Well, it tells me that apparently I own, according to the diocese, part of what uh, uh, the I own the old what was the old churchyard at Holy Trinity, and somebody's put a preservation order on the trees, and it's my responsibility to deal with it. Well, I don't. I, well, if I own it, I want to. Can I sell it? Well, yeah. Clergy pension. Yeah, exactly. So uh, and. Uh, yeah, and the preservation order from the council says all trees, and I really would like to know if I wanted to object to the two holly, holly trees, which surely can't be a protected species. But which church is this other than Holy Trinity? There was a, there was a daughter church in Beminster, which uh, was built in the early 1800s, right. because Beminster was expected to grow the other side of town, over in the area called Shortmoor, which you wouldn't know, which probably where the Catholic church is. And it never did. And uh, the church grew more dilapidated and tired and was closed in 1982. But it was the church in the town where the, the working people went to, as opposed to the town centre, which was the, you know, the posher people, so to speak, in those days. But, of course, posh has gone out the window since I arrived, so that's OK. Ah, uh, you're here for the working man. I'm here for the working man, yeah. Black con it's Black Country Day today, you know. Is it? Uh, yeah, Black Country Day today, and I've already seen a number of Black Country flags and things on my Facebook page of people wishing themselves Happy Black Country Day. One thing I never understood, and I remember having a lesson on it at school, and I still don't get it, is yeah. why it was called the Black Country. Ah, uh, no, it's, it's very simple. It used to be a, a centre of industry, didn't it? Lots of foundries and yeah. smelty mines and coal mines. And Queen Victoria, whilst going through that area on her train, asked for the curtains to be closed on her carriage because of that awful black country. Ah, uh, so it's Queen Victoria. Yeah, blame her. Yeah, yeah. yeah blame her. They always yeah. referred to the black country as the industrialised area in when I was at school, but they never told me how it was named. That's why it was called the black country. No, no, no. Draw the blinds from this dreadful black country. There we go. I can go to bed now. I've um, I've learned something today. You've learned something. There you are. So there you are. On National Black Country. No, I can't be national, but on Black Country Day, you uh, you you've learned you've learned something. I've learned something. So. But the Black Country has kind of spread a long way now. I mean, it's good to be part of it. It's one of these you know selling points. But where I was born in Smethwick, it was never part of the Black Country. Never. But of course, it's been a kind of attached itself to the title. 
Yeah. But the black country has been Dudley, Cradley Heath, I guess, those kind of places. Wolverhampton, edge of, but not the sole, but Wolverhampton prides itself on being part of the black country. Only places like Bilston, because he's had a big iron foundry and Colesley and places would have been originally. So it's all those kind of places. Tipton is a big place. Tipton, you know, where every man has a flat cap and a ferret and, and a whippet. I broke my leg in Dudley. Did you? That's my claim to fame to the black country. Well, there you are. I was playing football for the Christian Union when I was at university. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Dirty, dirty teams, some of these, you know, Christian teams. Well, that was me. That was you. Oh, there we are. Well, <laughs> the delightful Anne in our office, she's a Dudley person. Born and raised in Born Dudley. Has, yeah, she got, has she still got the accent as well? Yes, when we get together in the office, people can't understand us. Brilliant. That's Can we have a pause and let's have a pause. Mary and Martha? Yes, on this good black country day. You're going to read, Chris. I'll read Luke chapter 10. Yeah. And as they went on their way, Jesus entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered, Martha, Martha, you're worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. There we are. I'm just trying to bring in an association there of the black country being the Martha of England, where our industrial work was done. I think I think lots of other areas of England would claim also to be the centre of industry, but that's a particular... I like, I like how you did that. The, your, the style was good, Chris. Very good. Well, the style was there. I mean, it was a... Uh, yeah. 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 I think, I think we... You know, <laughs> We forget if we're not careful. The longer we live, I guess, the uh, the uh, history of our inherited places, you know, and, and what what they did and where they, you know, what what they meant in terms of prosperity for the country. Although, of course, the people weren't particularly prosperous uh, there, uh, the workers themselves. But that's an interesting passage. I, I've always liked that Mary and Martha story because you've got the. Um, the 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 counterbalance of the one who's the one who's deeply spiritual and hanging on every word that our Lord had to say, and the other one who is so busy working, and I think deeply spiritual as well, but gets wound up because she feels she's being used and put upon, um, and I, and I wonder whether that's because she would like to also have been, you know learning from from jesus because that's what was i think part was going on yeah i think you've got the two you're always you're always picking up mary's sorry martha's frustration of she wants to hear every word jesus has to say yeah but at that moment it's but i've got to make her i've got to make a cup of tea right so i've got to cook the dinner I, i've got to get i've got to make sure the biscuits are ready i've got to get the cake out we've got to we've got to get the nice cake out oh i better get the best china out and when I've done all of that, I can sit down and listen to what Jesus has to say. Yeah. And actually, Martha, Jesus says, just sit and listen. Whilst, of course, Mary is actually learned that skill already, you know. We'll well, get on with it later. Just in case people think we never prepare, I did have a quick read of what I said about this three years ago. Wow, well, Chris, this is exciting news. Oh, exciting news. And I actually went into the realms of a little bit of speculation. Oh. But it was okay because I labelled it as speculation. 
that's good. And I did say, you know, it may have been that Martha's job was making the tea and cooking the biscuits and the cakes. And Mary's job had been cleaning the living room and getting the place spick and span ready for Jesus' visit. And Mary had worked hard the day before and done all her jobs. Yeah. And so she could sit down and listen to Jesus because her jobs had been done. But that's pure speculation, dear reader. As you're proving with this very moment in time, a forward preparation, which you're suggesting Mary had done, is working a miracle. <laughs> You see, because I'm like I'm I'm like I'm like Martha, because I've now got my book. I'm trying to look through it to see if I can compete in these stakes. You see, oh. I'm just. What did I'm, you say six years ago, then, David? Uh, what did I say nine years ago and twelve years ago? <laughs> <laughs> uh, very much similar to yourself, probably, Chris. At one point, at that moment, I would imagine I've changed it uh, a bit. It's um. I just love the story that 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 um, you know that not vision, but that you know thing of you know Mary sitting at Jesus's feet. When I came into ministry, maybe totally misguided and totally naive, perhaps that's really what I felt we would be doing. You know, learning from Jesus, listening to him, the quiet time, the spiritual time, but. We know that we're very much like Mary, aren't we? Because you're going to be dashing around arranging a wedding and a funeral. I'm going to be swearing a licence and doing team news articles. And and then I'm going to be getting ready for something else. And then I'm going to be getting ready for something else. So at the PCC meeting tonight, because um, they can't not meet, they've got a co-op meeting all the time, even though there's nothing on the agenda different from a few weeks ago. And and, and we've become masters, haven't we? Well, I think, and I think that's... To me, that's the purpose of the parable, isn't it? You know, we do our daily offices, our morning and evening prayer, but it can so easily get squeezed out, and our yes. time with Jesus can get squeezed out because we have so much to do all the time. And, you know, Jesus came and had a cup of tea with yeah. Mary and Martha, yeah. and that little snapshot of the hour or however long Jesus was in the house with Mary and Martha is the time to sit down and reflect with Jesus. So enjoy your guest. Um, you know, yeah. I even had to work, I, I remember how we had a little discussion with Julia last week. Me and Julia sat in the garden and she was sat there looking, oh, look, there's a weed there. Oh, I've got to prune that plant. Oh, that needs trimming. Oh, this needs doing. And I just said, look, there is a point where you can actually sit down, have a cup of tea and enjoy your garden without being burdened by the amount of work that still needs to be done in it. Yeah, I mean, it, yes, right. It, it is to a degree about the, the whole that story in many ways is about service, isn't it? Mm -hmm. For Mary, service is being with Jesus, learning, hearing, hopefully being prepared to take it on and using it. Whereas for Martha, service of Jesus meant, as you say, making him a cup of tea, baking him a cake. Yeah. And doing. Mm -hmm. And if we're not careful, we get caught up in the doing and not in the being in the presence of and with with Jesus. Yeah, and and I, it's, it's, you know, it's probably more visible in small rural churches because there's a lot of rural spirituality yeah. where they just keep quiet, they just get on with the work, yeah. you know, and they go to church, we pray, but the work's done. The roof's mended, the heating's put on, the communion table's set. All the work is done around keeping these little churches running. Mm. And it's done in great faith. Um, but I was also deeply heartened, you know, the other last year or so when, you know, somebody had a heart attack in one of these little rural churches, a gentleman just goes in and prays every day. Yeah. To spend his five minutes. He said, he just, I just sit there in five minutes and then gets on with his work. Yeah, there's something in that story about it's more in for is it more is, is it more uh, and I'll, I'll phrase it is it to the power so it is is it more important to feed the spirit or the soul or the body because that's the kind of the comparison is it Martha's busy feeding and G and, and 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 Mary's being fed by Jesus yeah and I, I was noticing yesterday, because the viewer, we were on a we were on our annual 
<coughs> compulsory, supposedly, attendance day um, at the feet of the bishop and uh, etc. Uh, at uh, a, a Bryanston School. And I was interested as I sat there just trying to uh, observe, because I like observing people. Part of my job used to be people watching in a way. And I was amazed how many people were still constantly working on their phones throughout the whole of the day. They just couldn't stop. And I deliberately left. I, yeah, well, I deliberately left my phone in the car. I thought. Yeah, I, no. answered, I answered a couple of emails just because they needed an answer. Yeah. And I should have been at the feet listening to every word the bishop said. Well, you were. I'm sure you were there. Um, but it's interesting, isn't it? How on a day set aside for us for that very purpose, we're still marthering as opposed to marrying. Yes, it is. I, th I think it's a deep negative side mm -hmm. of the internet. I think a lot of people. I think a lot of people. Don't, it's just. I don't think. I don't think we're any different to any other group of people. You know, my daughter. My daughter was on holiday for five days and spent two mornings on on them on a Zoom training because, you know, it had to be it, the training had been changed and and then her boss insisted she had to do it, and so for two mornings she spent an hour on Zoom. But yes, you was on holiday, and you're in, you're entitled to your holiday. But it's got even in, in in a lot of places with a lot of younger people that everything is work is more important than the time to rest and to be. And the, the story for me about Mary and Marty that Mary has learned that it's important to stop in the presence of God, as you say. If we're not careful, we get pushed out of morning prayer or evening prayer because other things become more important. And they shouldn't be, should they, really? I guess. No, we're, I mean, all, you know, we're, we're all guilty come, of it. Sure. We're all guilty of it. You come back to that, you know, Mary recognised this was a special moment because yeah. Jesus was in her house. Yeah. I don't think Martha recognised the special moment, but for her the specialty was hospitality is, is, is key. And we, we'll talk a lot about hospitality in our church lives, you know, about being hospitable, having coffee at the back of church after service, you know, the walking Wednesday thing we've done in Bemington and you've seen other churches. It's about being hospitable, and that's true. But if hospitality, I think, takes over from the spiritual, then we've... Yeah, somehow... I think that was almost one of the reasons why I've reduced the amount of filming I've done, is mm. because, you know, when I get people come to church and they offer to help out, but you talk to them after doing it for a few weeks and they say, you know what, I can't concentrate on worship. Yeah. I can't concentrate on the busy on the on, on God because I'm still worried about was well, this microphone level right? Is is this camera angle right? And should I do this or should I do that? Yeah. And again, it's the doing, the work that needs to be done is then suffocating the spiritual and and I, I, well, I actually adopted an attitude of, well, look, then I, I won't film, and if I film, I'll do it, because it's my job to help you lot worship. That's right. You know, I'll do my private worship in presence of God outside of that service, because that's my service to the community, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, and it's so easy, you know, is the communion table set right? Has he got everything he needs? Do we process up the bread and the wine? When do we take up the collection? You know, all these people that do work and all these little jobs are all important. And we do appreciate that everybody does them. Mm -hmm. But if we do them, if anybody does them, and this is a message from me, dear viewer, to all of you, if everything you do just becomes a burden and it stops you being in the presence of Jesus, then we need to review what we're up to. Yep. And that's all of us. We, 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 we mustn't over ever forget that ourselves. If, yeah. if things are not getting in the way of Jesus, then uh, it's time to stop and to reappraise uh, where we are. And I think uh, that's a good message for all of us. Uh, and perhaps as rural dean, I need to talk, to, uh, take that to heart and talk with other people about it. If things get in the way of Jesus, There we go. There's my sermon written for Sunday. Stop it. If things get in the way of Jesus, you've helped me to write mine as well, I'm sure, uh, Chris. Chris, yes. as ever, it's always a pleasure. And thank, thank you very much for your wisdom and wiseness as, uh, and wise things this morning. Uh, I'm not sure who's back and who's not back next week or who's doing what next week, but dear viewer, I'm sure I'm sure two or three of us 
we'll gather together and uh, and uh, and uh, and, uh, and uh, share again uh, on that. But um, thank you very much for watching us. You can uh, follow us on all the usual things, Chris. You've got your Facebook and your. Do you still doing TikTok? I'm still doing TikTok. My viewers have dropped last week, the last couple of weeks. So I've got to up the game a bit there. You I only had 250 game. people watch this week. Oh, there we are, I see. It was a thousand three weeks ago. Yeah, you must have said something, though, that was stimulating the. Um, stimulating. Maybe I'll go and record now and I'll talk about what gets in the way of Jesus. What gets in the way of Jesus. Yeah, and if you're in the Bemister area, you can catch us on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and on Instagram. the website, Instagram and all those kind of things. But you know that because you do watch us anyway. And we're very, very grateful. And we're always very grateful for your comments and your thoughts uh, and keep on sending them because uh, it does us good and encourages us to, um, to do them each week. It's been great. So there we are. So service, important. Hospitality, important. But don't let it get in the way of Jesus. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.